Every year, millions of people visit Paris and see the Eiffel Tower. The tower has been one of the most recognizable landmarks in the city, and it can be hard to imagine Paris without it. However, in comparison with other things, it is a fairly new addition to the city, being only under 150 years old. With its unique appearance, it is one of the most recognizable buildings in the world, and stands out from the rest of Paris. But aside from being a tourist attraction, what other purposes does it serve? What's up guys, Friendly Neighborhood Pig here, and in this video we're going to be going over the history behind the Eiffel Tower. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let's just get into the video. The concept for the Eiffel Tower was first conceived for the 1889 World Fair held in Paris that year. At this point in French history, after the fall of Napoleon III and the Second French Empire, France was now in its Third Republic. International exhibitions had been held in France under Napoleon III, for instance in 1855 and 1867, which were meant to display France's culture and achievements to people from around the world. Following the French defeat in the Franco-Prussian War and the establishment of the Third French Republic in 1870, France now sought to re-establish itself to the rest of the world and showcase what the newly formed Republic had to offer. A World's Fair was held in Paris in 1878. Among the many things displayed there was the head of the Statue of Liberty, which would later be given to the United States. The expedition's success led to another one being planned for 1889, the 100th anniversary of the start of the French Revolution. If you are interested in learning more about that part of French history, there is a video on my channel which goes into more detail about it. Because this event commemorated the monarchy being overthrown in France, and subsequently its king and queen being executed, many European monarchies chose to boycott it, though it was still attended by millions of people from around the world. It was also hoped that this fair would help with some of France's economic problems it had at the time. A competition was held to design a landmark which would be the centerpiece of the exposition. Some of the rejected designs were a giant guillotine, a large sprinkler, and a giant lighthouse. There were over 100 submissions, however, a design for a large iron tower from Gustave Eiffel's company ended up being chosen. Gustave Eiffel was a French engineer who had designed many different structures around the world throughout his career such as the Ponte Eiffel in Portugal, St. Mark's Cathedral in Chile, the Maria Pia Bridge also in Portugal, part of the Observatory in Nice, France, and the iron framework for the Statue of Liberty. He started his company in 1867. The Eiffel Tower was primarily the work of Maurice Coquelin with the help of Emile Naguar. There was also help from Stephen Salvestri, who did most of the exterior designs and made it more aesthetically pleasing. Salvestri's designs helped convince Gustave Eiffel to go along with the project. The original patent for a new configuration allowing the construction of metal supports and pylons capable of exceeding a height of 300 meters was filed under the names of Gustave Eiffel, Maurice Coquelin, and Emile Naguar. Eiffel would eventually purchase the full rights to the tower from the other two. Construction began in 1887 and was completed by 1889. The tower was only originally intended to be there for 20 years. At around 1,000 feet, or about 300 meters, it surpassed the Washington Monument to become the tallest structure in the world at that time. Throughout its construction, there was opposition from many Parisians and artists who thought it didn't look good and would make the city look worse. A letter protesting the tower was published in a French newspaper in 1887, which read in part, We have come, writers, painters, sculptors, architects, passionate enthusiasts of the hitherto untouched beauty of Paris, to protest with all our strength, all our indignation, in the name of the unknown French taste in the name of art and of French history threatened against the erection in the heart of our capital of the useless and monstrous Eiffel Tower, which public malignity, often marked by common sense and the spear of justice, has already named Tower of Babel. Without falling into the exaltation of chauvinism, we have the right to proclaim that Paris is the unrivaled city in the world. And are we going to let all this be profaned? Will the city of Paris go on to associate itself longer with the Baroques, with the mercantile imaginations of the machine builder, to become irreparably ugly and dishonor itself? For the Eiffel Tower, which commercial America itself would not want, is doubtless the dishonor of Paris. Everyone feels it, everyone says it, everyone deeply grieves it, and we are only a weak echo of the universal opinion, so legitimately alarmed. It suffices, moreover, to realize what we are doing. 
to imagine for a moment a vertiguously ridiculous tower dominating Paris, as well as a giant factory chimney crushing with its barbarian mass, Our Lady, the Saint Chapelle, the Dome of the Invalides, the Arc de Triomphe, all our humiliated monuments, all our shrunken architectures which will disappear in this astonishing dream, and for twenty years we will see how to stretch out over the entire city. Still quivering with the genius of so many centuries, we will see the odious shadow of the odious column of the bolted sheet metal stretch like an ink stain. When the Eiffel Tower opened on March 31st, 1889, it was located at the entrance of where the World's Fair would be when it began in May. When the tower was inaugurated in March, Gustave Eiffel led a group of people to the top where they raised a French flag. Since the elevators were not yet operational, they had to take the stairs. In total, there are over 1,600 steps. Inside the tower, at the first floors, there are restaurants, and at the very top, there is a private apartment and office for Gustave Eiffel, where visitors would also be hosted. Eiffel and his company had to fund the majority of the building, though they were able to make the money back in a short time. Upon opening to the public, the Eiffel Tower was a big success and attracted almost 2 million visitors in its first year. Another World's Fair was held in Paris in 1900, where the Eiffel Tower underwent some reservations for. By 1909, the city of Paris assumed ownership of the tower, as it was scheduled to be torn down because it had been 20 years since 1889. Gustave Eiffel knew the tower needed to have a real purpose in order to stay up. Even shortly after its construction, he began looking for ways it can be used for science. A weather observatory was set up near the top, and it had begun to be used for radio transmissions. In 1898, French scientist Eugène Ducreté was able to send transmissions from the Eiffel Tower to the Pantheon. The wireless transmission from the tower began to be utilized by the military, and by 1909, largely because of this new technology, the Eiffel Tower was deemed important enough to stay. It didn't take long for this decision to pay off, as the tower was able to be used during World War I, and was even able to intercept enemy messages. As the years went by, the Eiffel Tower became more of an attraction, and became a symbol of Paris and France. The tower is repainted every seven years, and as of making this video, is currently undergoing maintenance in preparation for the 2024 Olympics, which will be held in Paris. It is estimated almost 7 million people visit the tower each year, making it one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. Well, that was the summarization of the early history of the Eiffel Tower. Thank you guys for watching, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you liked the video, and don't forget to check out some other videos on my channel as well. I try to upload as often as possible, so there should be a new video coming out soon. Thank you guys, this has been the Friday Bird Pig, and I will see you guys soon with another video.